Hi, it's Ken here. In this tutorial, we're going to have a look at how to create a classic film noir effect. Now, this is an image that's going to be reminiscent of the film noir genre of the 40s and 50s, when they used black and white with really low key lighting to create stunning images with really high contrast between light, shadows and atmosphere. OK, well, without further ado, let's get on with it. OK, step one is really converting the image to black and white. This is really key. Now, my tool of choice for this is a gradient map, as this will provide nice contrasty tones. Now, we need to make sure that the, the, the colours for your foreground and background are set to black and white as default. And you can do that by pressing the D key and then pressing the X key to toggle those colours until you get black as the foreground colour and white as the background colour. Now then we're going to choose a gradient map adjustment layer. And we're going to select gradient map. I'll just bring the panel in so you can see it. And this gives us a nice, really rich black and white effect based on your foreground or background colours being black and white. And the actual gradient itself being basically the first one, which is your black to white, your foreground to background colour. OK. Now, step two, I thought I'd add a little splash of colour. And I thought what I'd do is it'd be nice just to have the model's lips here because they're quite nicely red and really standing out as a bit of a focal point. So the, the colours are actually still there because I've not actually converted this to a black and white image. I've just put a, a filter on it. And if I turn that off, you'll see that the lips are still quite red. Well, what I need to do now is mask through this mask by painting on it with black to reveal the colour of the lips underneath. So I'm going to get a paintbrush. Uh, that's not a bad size. I'm going to be painting with black as my foreground colour. I'm going to be make sure that the mask is active. Important to do that because if I click on there, the mask isn't active at the moment. What's active is the adjustment. I want the mask to be active. And then I'm just going to paint on with red. And it's a bit, so I'll zoom in a little bit just so I can get a little bit more accurate and then spacebar drag. Let me brush a little bit smaller with the square bracket keys and just try and get an accurate edge on these lips. If I go wrong, this is obviously a mask, so if I go wrong like that, then all I've got to do is press the X key to swap back to the, my white as a foreground colour and paint out any error that I've made. And then press the X key again if I need to continue. And I've just missed a bit there, so I'll just paint that in. And that little bit there. Okay, just Control and minus to zoom out. Do I think that looks OK? Yeah, I don't think that looks bad. Righty-ho. Step three, let's enhance the contrast a little bit. And I'm going to do that with a little bit of dodging and burning. Now, this is where we're going to be like trying to brighten the highlights and deepen the shadows a little bit, just to enhance the contrast and make it a little bit more atmospheric. OK, now I'm going to do this on a new layer, so I'm going to click to produce an empty layer and we'll call this dodge and burn for want of a better title and i'm going to fill this with 50 percent gray so i'm going to use the keyboard shortcut of shift and f5 and then you can make a selection here foreground color background color i'm going to pick 50 percent gray and click ok now that blanks out all the, the rest of the what's happening underneath. But what I want to do is now try and make these pixels invisible. And we can do that with a blend mode. And if I select now the soft light blend mode, it basically soft light can't see 50% gray. So it makes them invisible. So now I can paint on them 
but I can't see them so it doesn't impede me looking at the image okay I'm gonna go over and select me dodge we'll do, we'll do a bit of dodging first which is the lightning process I'll leave it set to highlights because you can choose shadows midtones or highlights I'll try on the highlights and I'll have a low exposure and I do this so when you're brushing you're building it up slowly um, you're not just cutting a swathe through and then thinking oh you know, I've done that wrong and have to get rid of it so I'll, I'll use quite a big brush to start with and I'm, and I'm just going to go over anywhere that's basically got a bit of a highlight in it that I think is light and I'm just going to try and lighten it and it does take a few strokes but you'll see if you look over it's actually building up now on the actual layer itself so I'm, I'm lightening that layer and if I turn that off you'll see the effect it's happening it's giving me a lightning effect and I'll have a go around here on some of the lighter parts play on the face and up here on the head maybe even a couple of areas on the hat that you think well I'll just lighten them up a little bit just to add a little bit more contrast and then you can see it all building up on the layer here so if I turn it on and off you can see that those highlights now uh, have been lightened okay you can do that to your heart's content I'll now try and the burn tool and the burn tool is the darkening effect so I'll make the brush a little bit bigger and I'll just look at some of the areas that I think well I'll just want them a little bit darker like this beard yeah I think I'd like to darken that down a bit and the eyes there and there and you can see again this is all building up now as added contrast I'll darken some of these areas here and it's a case of just making multiple passes and building up the effect nice and slowly in any of the shadow areas so you can see some darker areas that are appearing now you can see I'm now getting a nice bit of contrast so I'll make me brush a little bit smaller and I'll just get into these areas to darken them off and round the edge of the eyes with a nice small brush just to pick them out as a bit of a, a bit of a highlight and the same with this one just darken his eyebrows a little bit and then round the edge of the eyes give that a few passes just to add a little bit of extra contrast to it and we just darken the lips down a little bit as well And you can see if I turn everything off but that layer I'll hold the alt key down and click the visibility eye and that turns everything off but that layer and you can see the effects now I'm building up some highlights and I'm deepening down some of the shadow areas just to add that contrast okay I'll hold the alt key down and click on the eye again to bring all the layers back righty ho I think we're going in a good direction step four I'd like to just add a little bit more global contrast so I'm going to try and do that with a curves adjustment layer if I just drag the properties panel out you can see the adjustment here and all I'm going to do is drag down on the shadows area so about the 25% mark and then drag up on the highlight areas just to add a little bit more contrast to it Okay, a little bit more gritty something like that yeah I'm okay with that step five now what we're going to do is merge all the layers together to a new layer right at the top of the stack and then we're going to add even more contrast with a levels adjustment layer okay so let's do that straight away we're going to make sure that the top layer is selected and then we're going to hold down the keyboard shortcut Control, alt shift and then press the e key and what that's going to do is merge everything onto a new merge layer at the top so just so i know what it is i'll call that 
merged. There we go. And then we'll just add a levels adjustment. So I'll go to image and adjustments and levels. Bring it on. And we'll just pull these sliders in. So we'll darken the darks and we'll lighten the lights just to make it look a little bit more contrasty. Ah, I like that. I think we're going in a good direction. And we're doing this for a specific reason, which you'll see in a minute. So I'm going to click OK. OK, step six. I want to blur this a little bit because I'm going to use this to make a displacement map, for which we'll be using later. So I'm going to go up to filter and blur and our popular friend, the Gaussian blur filter. And I'll put in about 10 pixels. I really want to soften off all those edges, probably even a bit more, maybe 12 pixels, something like that. In fact, that's not looking well. Let's take it up to about 20 pixels. Yeah, I think that's a bit better. Yeah. OK, we'll click OK to finish that off. OK, step seven. What I want to do is to save this out now to use as a displacement map. Now, I need to save this out to a location where I know where it is as a PSD document. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go to file and save as and I'll save it to my desktop so I know where it is and I'll call it film noir displacement map okay and then I can click to save it as a Photoshop document and click OK now to keep this file separate from the displacement map, I'm just going to save this out again and rename it. So I'll save it as film wire, but instead of displacement map, I'll just cut WIP for work in progress. Doesn't matter what you call it, just so long as it separates it. And we'll click save and we'll click OK. Now we can delete this top layer, this merge layer, because we, we only put that on just to make the displacement map. So we can right click, select delete layer or drag it over the trash can. And we're back to where we, we need to be. Right, in step eight, what we're going to do is lay the foundations for creating what was at the time a very popular look, which was like light coming through a blind. So in step eight, we're going to try and create the blind. OK, so let's make a start. So I'm going to create it on a new layer. So I'll click the new layer icon to put a blank layer at the top. And then I'm going to turn off the other layers. So by clicking on the visibility eyes, so I can see what I'm doing with this layer. Let's move that out the way. OK, now I'm going to get my marquee tool to start off this process. And I'm going to click and drag and just make like one of the slats of a blind, if you like, something like that. And then I'm going to fill it with black. Now I've got black as my foreground colour. So nice little keyboard shortcut for filling with your foreground colour is Alt and Backspace. So that's going to fill me up that little selection. Now I'm going to press Ctrl and D to deselect that. So now I need to, to replicate this all the way down. Now I'm, I'm just going to use one of the guides just as a, an indication. So I want, the, I want the gap to be, well, just a bit less than the guide itself, or about this. Well, leave it about there. And this is just to give me an idea of where to put it. So I'll just get rid of that one. Didn't want two. OK. And we'll probably move that up a little bit. So I'll just hold the control key down and just move that guide up a little bit. Yeah, I think that looks cool. Right, I'm now going to go into transform mode on this. So I'm going to press control and T. And then I'm going to just drag this down roughly to where the guide is, somewhere about there. And I'm going to hold the shift key down to make sure it registers, it comes vertically down. That's OK. And then I'm going to accept the transformation. And this is important that we, we transform and then we accept the transformation. Because what we're going to do now is, is basically what they call step and repeat. So now there's a keyboard shortcut. Control, Alt, Shift and T. And what this is going to do is going to create a new layer, transform 
and keep going and making more layers. So if I press the T now, so I'm holding down Control Alt Shift and T, you'll see it makes another layer for me. And I'll press the T again and the T again. And every time I press a T, it transforms and it adds. So I've now got a load of little single blinds. And what I need to do is to put them down all into one layer. So I'm going to make sure the top layer is active, which it is. I'm going to go down and then I'm going to hold the shift key down and click to select all the layers in between. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut of Control and E to mash all them down into one layer. And then I'll rename this layer Blinds. And we're good to go. I can turn now all the other layers back on just so we can see what this effect looks like as it is. Right now step 9 what I want to do is transform these, this top layer, this blinds layer now to make it look a little bit as though the lights come in at an angle across the faces of our two subjects. I'm going to do that with transform but I need to transform a long way outside the document bound so I'm going to make the document smaller with control and minus. And then I'm going to enter transform, control and T. And I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut of holding the control key down, basically to be able to transform each corner or it's independently. And I'm going to drag this one out that way. Drag this one out a little bit like that. Maybe pull that out a little bit. So you can see what I'm doing. And what I'm trying to do is to get it so that I've got a little bit of the eyes in each one, so I may need to be to rotate it a bit round, all this kind of thing, and move it backwards and forwards, because I, I really would like the eyes to be a, a special feature. So we'll go for something like that. That's not bad. Let's just try drag it out a little bit further up that way. I think I'm going to go with that. So I'm going to double click to accept it. Now in step 10, I'm going to try and add a little bit of a, of a realistic look to it by trying to bend all these lines across the contours of the face. So I'll just zoom, just zoom that out a little bit so you can see. And for that, we're going to use the displacement map that we used earlier. Now, so we, we're just going to go up to filter and distort and displace. We're going to accept all this. This is just default settings. They're fine. I'm going to click OK. And then it's going to ask me where do I want to find the displacement file. And if we remember, I think we saved it on the desktop. So we're going to scroll down and find Film Noir Displacement Map. That's good enough for me. So I'm going to click on that and then click open. And it'll take a couple of seconds for it to render, but then you'll get a subtle, but it will just bend these depending on, on how much contrast that you've put in because it's, it's moving the pixels based on the contrast. So if you've not got a lot of contrast, you're not going to get a lot of movement. But you can see we've got a subtle little bend on these to just to add that little bit of realism. Now step 11, I want to blur these a little bit. So we're going to go and add a blur to this blinds layer. So we're going to go up to filter and blur and Gaussian blur. And then we'll just eyeball it really. But we're looking at a probably something like yeah, I'm up at 44, 45 pixels is looking not bad. I don't want it too blurry, but I don't want it too still. So I'll just drop it down a little bit more. So it's got a little bit of a realistic edge to it. So I'll click OK to that and then I'll just reduce the opacity a little bit so we can see through it a little bit and it just gives that edgy look to it that they're actually looking actually and we've got a blind coming across them yeah I'm happy with that okay step 12 I'd like to add a little bit more atmosphere by adding a little bit of smoke 
So what we're going to do is, you could do this with a smoke image, but what I'm going to do is try and do it in Photoshop. So I'll create an empty layer at the top of the stack to do it on, and I'll call this smoke. I'll make sure that my foreground and background colours are set to black and white, which they are. And then I'm going to go up to my filter menu, and down to render, and down to clouds. And this is going to give me a, well, a cloudy looking sort of image. Um, it's not bad at the moment, but it does need a bit of work. So I'm going to blur it again with our old friend, the Gaussian Blur. So I'm going to go to Blur and Gaussian Blur and add a few pixels of blur in there just to mush it up a little bit. That's looking a little bit better. And then I think I'll transform it. So I'll, I'll just scale it down a little bit with control and minus. And then I'll transform this layer. I'm going to again be holding my control key down. And I'm just going to stretch it out to try and make it look a little bit more smoke like than cloudy, really. And something. Yeah, no, that don't look bad. So I'll double click to accept that. And I'll zoom it back out again, just so you can see it. And then I'll change the blend mode just to blend it into that background. Let's try screen. Hmm, that's not bad actually. I, I can live with that. And then I think I'll just drop the opacity a little bit. Just to, I just want that as a hint in the background. And it, it really is too much over the face, so I'm going to put a mask on this layer. So I'm going to click the mask icon to put a mask on. Make sure black's my foreground colour. Pick a nice big paintbrush. If it's not big enough, use the square brackets next to the P key to make it bigger. And I'm just going to click a couple of times just to remove it from the immediate vicinity of the faces. Just so it's round the outside where it's not covering up the faces. And probably yeah, I think I'll just drop the opacity a little bit more. Just so it's, I just want it as a hint in the background. Only a little bit more, 16. Yeah, that's not bad. I'm quite liking that. Right, step 13 and the final step. I'd like to add a little bit of sharpening with a high pass filter. Now to do this, it's always better to do it on one layer. So um, I'm going to click to make sure that top layer is active in the stack. And I'm going to copy um, everything to a new layer with that big long keyboard shortcut we, we learned earlier, which is Control, Alt, Shift and E. And that smooshes everything together onto a new layer at the top. And I'll call this Sharpen. And then on this layer, we can do some sharpening. I'm going to go to Filter and Other and High Pass. Now this is really good and I'm going to I'm just looking at this preview here and what you're looking for is so you can just see the detail. But I don't want to sharpen all the background, I just want some nice detail. So one pixel or slightly less, I'd say probably I'll leave that at one pixel. I think that's going to be okay. And I'll click OK. Now the sharpening isn't very visible, so what I want to do now is make it visible by, let's say, choosing Overlay or Soft Light. Overlay is a little bit more powerful, so if I select Overlay, I'll get a little bit of a, quite a harsh effect. I'll just blow it up a little bit, because it's, it's not really that big. Okay, we should be viewing this at 100% really. So yeah, if you look at the hat, you can see that it's got quite a little bit of sharpening coming on there. I don't quite like that. If I want a softer effect, then I would have chosen soft light. And that gives you a slightly, not as in your face sharpening. But I'd like this to be quite strong. So I'm going to stick back with overlay. And that's it. Our work here is done. Or maybe just a finishing, finishing touch will be to put a little bit of a board around. So I'll use an effect, so I'll double click the sharpen layer in the little corner area and I'll select a stroke. I'll leave the colour set to white and I only want it to be a very subtle 
little pin line so we'll say three or four pixels and click OK. Now one final final thing to consider might be the file size. Because we've stretched with that clouds layer and other layers, we've stretched outside the document bound with a lot of this image that's actually bigger than the document bounds. So if we look at the file size down here, we can see that it's actually at now I've got my file at 632.9 megabytes, which is quite big. And it's because a lot of this image is not visible. It's behind the pasteboard. So you might want as a final thing just to reduce this file size is to use the crop tool. And if we click on the crop tool, you can see that it's just giving you a preview of what's going off behind the scenes. So this is the blinds layer that we used and a lot of it we're not using. And so it, it's actually adding quite a lot to the file size. So if I just use delete cropped pixels, make sure that that is ticked and then I double click inside the crop. That's going to drop that file size down to from 600, nearly 700 megabytes to 182.5 megabytes, which is a worthwhile step, I think, to finish it off. Well, that's it. How to make a 1940s film noir effect on an image. I hope you found it useful. If it was, give me a thumbs up or leave me a comment below the video. If you get a chance, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Live Link Training, for more videos on Photoshop and Lightroom. So the next time I launch a video, you're the first to know. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.